programming in C-sharp and ASP.NET. This is Mr. Wilson, your instructor and guide as we take a closer look at C-sharp and ASP.NET. This is CS ASP 022 storing values in an array. Hey there gang, um, so we're going to look at uh, what it takes to store uh, values in an array and um, how that uh, plays out, how we use that in our, um, in our programming. Um, so for example, let's say, uh, let's say that uh, a friend of ours came to us, they manage a soccer team, and they want us to create a program for their lineup. So one of the things that we would know is a goalie, that they have multiple goalies, and do you want to create a variable for each one of those, or how do you want to do that? And um, we, uh, we are familiar with the idea that, you know, when we create a variable, we can create a variable, we can put, uh, you know, like, like it's a bucket. There's something we can put in it, and we can call it by calling the name of that bucket any time we want and, and get the value that's inside that bucket. Well, so that's how our variables have worked up to now. For example, we create a string, a string, and the name uh, goalie is the variable name, and we can pull the information Bob every time we use that. But if we have multiple goalies, um, and uh, only one goalie can play on the field at a time, how do we keep how do we keep track of that? And so you can see down here that would be. You know, are we going to create uh, name goalie one, name goalie two, name goalie three, name goalie? What if it's a, a very large list, or what if it's many things? And so that is where we start to talk about how we would use an array, especially an array. Um, so we can create arrays of uh, of ints, we can create an array of doubles, we can create an array of string, and uh, we can create an array of char for or for a character, and um, so there's multiple ways that we can create a array and and store multiple objects in that one name, and then access it by using the index. So, for example, in this we have, and a lot of times when we talk about an array, we'll say an array of string, okay, an array of type string. And so in this case, this is an array of type string named goalie. And it has in, in the index under um, numbers, it will have the items that are in there, the different pieces, the values that we have. In this case, all arrays always start with zero. Uh, this sometimes throws people and they'll start uh, trying to count from one, two, three, like we normally do. But in this case, zero means something. So we have an index of zero, or an index of one, or an index of two. And that is how we would, if we said, okay, we're going, to, we've got three items, but we're going to index um, um, name goalie uh, hard brackets one, then we would get Sue. Because one, it starts with zero, Bob is zero, Sue is one, and Jules is two, okay? Um, so with that thought in mind, um, we're going to look at how arrays work and how we can use them to put items in. The other nice thing about arrays being in this number order is um, we can use them to uh, iterate through them and pull each item one at a time. Or we can uh, put items in and I iterate through it one at a time. So that's one of the reasons why it's important to know where it starts and where it begins. Um, so anyway, let's, let's go to Visual Studios. Hey there, programmers. Um, as you can see, I've got an application already built here. Uh, what I've done is I have put 
uh, five text boxes on here, and I've just named them text box zero, uh, text box one, text box uh, two, three, and four, because remember we started at zero. So I have five text boxes. Um, I have two buttons. One is called add, and the other is called retrieve and I have a result label right down here. And um, we're gonna use this then to, uh, to uh, do some work on it and uh, be able to talk about arrays. So go ahead and stop me and uh, build this for yourself so that you can use it while we're doing this. Okay, are you ready? So let's go over here. Uh, if you double click these buttons, uh, it will bring you over, it will build this little template for you uh, for uh, button add dash click um, and also the private void button retrieve, okay? So already built those two. Um, let me start right here. And so we want to, the first thing we want to do is we want to instantiate our array. In other words, we want to build our array and so we're going to um, we're going to do this. We're going to say string these hard boxes, okay? Uh, these square boxes, and then I'm going to call it values equals new string. And then I've put a five on the inside of here, and that is the five spaces in our array. Remember, zero, one, two, three, four is our numbers in our array. Okay, so go ahead and do that. So now we have an array that is built that has uh, five little cubby holes, places that we can put items in there. So if I come down here and I say um, values and um, then I put the box, oh, nope, let's put the boxes. And in the boxes, let's put zero equals, and then we're going to put a uh, text box zero right there, dot, and um, text. Now whatever is in text box zero will now be inside of values in our array. Okay. Um, Let's do that for the other ones um, also. Um, I'm going to cheat just because uh, I'm just going to paste that in. One, two, three, four. And I'm, I know there's only four because I have a zero already, but I'm going to create one more, and I'm going to do that on purpose. I want to show you something with that. So let me go here, and that one is one, and this one is one, and this one is two. I'm sure you can figure uh, this part out on your own, um, but let's just go ahead and do this. Three, and four, and let's leave that as zero, and uh, let's make that one five, okay? Notice we didn't get a red squiggly line under there telling us, hey, they're, uh, there is no values five. It's not going to do that. Um, but we're going to watch and see what it does. Okay, let's just uh, let's go down here. Let's see if that worked. Let's say uh, let's go to our result label. There it is. And uh, dot. Content equals, and let's put uh, values, and let's put um, two. Okay. 
So if we were to do that, and uh, and then I went ahead and hit run, um, it's it's going to run for us. Here is our application, and um, if I put um, uh, if I put some random numbers in here. And then I hit add. Aha! There is our exception. And our exception says system out index out of range exception. Okay, so what it's telling me is hey, um, you tried to put six things in something that only has five holes in it. Um, five places for data and you tried to shove the other one in there, uh, you can't do that. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't exist. And so uh, index was outside of bounds. If you see an index was outside of bounds, it means you either tried to put something in an array that was smaller um, or the, yeah, the number's too big basically or the number's not one that's in there, okay? And um, so we can, we can close that and we can stop this. And uh, if we come and we uh, get rid of that and we run this, okay, so now we come back in here and I put in four and eight and 13 and 15 and 16 and hit add and it goes ahead and it prints out 13. Well 13 would be in the two slot in our array and so that would make sense and so um, that worked. That, would, that did exactly what we were wanting it to. Okay let's let's go back and um, Okay, so we got that to do what we wanted it to. Um, let's let's uh, let's try something else here. Um, let's uh, let's get rid of that, and um, let's come down here and let's say uh, label result dot content equals values. Um, dot and notice just like when we do some of our other things uh, when you do a dot it gives us a list of libraries then of things that are already built in little pieces of code that's already built in for us to use I'm wanting uh, one called length so we're going to take that and dot and we're going to say, uh, we, we have to change that. We can't take it the way it is. To string. So we're going we're gonna to call that. And that is a method, so we do have to put the, the brackets there, right? And so now, if we were to do this and run this, let's just run it and see. So we've, uh, here we go, here's our... Uh, Here's our little program again. Um, so if we've got this and we come back in here and we say uh, 4 and 8 and 13 and 15 and 16 and we click uh, add. Oh, see it gives us the number 5 back. So it's telling us the length of the, the array. If I want to know how many items are in the array, I can use the name of the array dot length and then I changed it to a string so that I can look at it. Or I could change it to a number uh, after I've got it in a string and uh, I could use that too if I need to do some mathematics or I needed to divide by. Um, this would be a quick way to be able to do that. Okay, let me go ahead and close that. And um, let's, um, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's, um, let's look at another way 
we could do this. What if we wanted to, um, what if instead of putting it in with text boxes, we wanted to, when we established it, uh, we wanted to, uh, to set up the whole thing. So if I come up here and I go, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to comment um, that all out. And uh, I want to come in here and I'm going to say um, string and uh, the boxes again and values and um, equals and new and string and then I'm going to put the boxes and five because there were five items but instead I'm going to also come back here I'm going to make, put curly brackets and I'm going to say uh, Bob let's capitalize poor Bob Bob and comma and Steve and comma and Mike and Bill and one more Let's say Don okay and so if I do that and then I say the same thing, I come back here and let's just um, and I, uh, I have that um, result label in there to where I can get to that again. If I run this, And instead of putting in here, I click Add. Ah, notice it brings up Mike. So we know that the data is in the array. Um, we've we've uh, we've put it in there. So we've shown that we can do that. Hey gang, it's Mr. Wilson. I'm on a different computer in a different room. Even um, I just wanted to clear up a couple of the little uh, little things I had going on in the other uh, in the other part of the video. Um, so as you can see over here on the screen, I've got a private void. Let's make this just a little bit bigger here. There we go. Uh, I've got the, uh, the array string values just like we had before. And I've got the names that are in there, the five uh, names um, that I had in there. And then one of the things that I've done here is I've created another string outside of um, that code block, that button click, um, and I've called it temp, okay? And so I've created an array out there that I can use anywhere in this program up and down. Um, I could have also created this one and then put the information straight from here into there. Um, I was just kind of looking at a way to kind of disconnect the information from one from the other. So you can see down here then I've got temp, which is my outside array equals values. So you can take one array and you can put it into another array. So that's kind of an interesting thing. You'll want to remember that. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good tool to be able to use. Okay, and so then down below that, I've got on the retrieve button, text box zero equals text box, and then I used my temporary array zero through four to be able to fill that information. And so if we go now to my, uh, our program, instead of, uh, instead of us, there it is, instead of us entering the information, we can click the add button. And now it's put that information in there into our array. And now I could push the retrieve button and see what it does. It actually fills all those boxes back in. So, um, that's what I wanted to do, what I wanted to show you. Um, 
And uh, so th hopefully this gives you a little clearer idea of how arrays work, that arrays, you put a series of information under the same variable name, except they're indexed, zero, two, whatever. And uh, th that's a way that we can access a group of data in our program. For example, let's say maybe it's a, a char in its grades, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, in there, and you can pull each one of those those up by um, by being able to pull those G, no, A, B, C, D, E, F, and they could be in a char, and you could pull all of those grades up. Okay, so anyway, just uh, just a, a little little piece of video to end this video. Um, let's go to the slides. CSASP023 Understanding Multidimensional Arrays. I look forward to seeing you there.